we will uh, try to go to Spain now. Uh, Cristina Masdiaria. Uh, Cristina, can you hear us? Hello, uh, we are trying to get Cristina from hello? Spain. Yes. Yes. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for, for answering my question. I would like to ask Dr. Maria Van Herkove if she could understand where are we now in the evolution of the pandemic? Could, if you can, you, can help you repeat, us to please? have a portrait of the current situation in a world level. Thank you very much. So thank you for the question. That's a, that's a difficult question um, in terms of where we are in this evolution. So we are um, clearly... Uh, many countries are, are in the, in the uh, difficult time right now in terms of dealing with this outbreak. Um, countries across Asia um, have had their first wave of infection, and many have, have been able to suppress the virus, have been able to bring the virus under control. We are seeing some countries which have seen a resurgence, um, namely in outbreaks and, and clusters of cases, either in expat dormitories or in, in major cities. Um, and so we're learning from Asia. Uh, in Europe, we're seeing a stabilization um, in many countries. We're seeing a decline in others. Um, and so that is welcomed news, but many countries have imposed uh, very strict public health uh, and, and social measures, uh, or so-called lockdown measures, and are looking to ease those. So uh, we cautiously need to see how, with the lifting of those measures, how that will impact uh, the virus in terms of its ability to transmit further. Uh, we are seeing increases in a number of countries across the Americas, um, and we, we've covered a couple of those today already. Um, but there are many countries uh, which are seeing an increase, uh, which is a worrying trend. We're seeing a number of countries in the eastern Mediterranean region um, see a stabilization and a decline in, in their cases. And again, this is, this is welcome news in terms of their ability to suppress this virus. But again, they have also imposed a strict public health and social measures. So we need to watch with caution as those uh, increase. In the situation in Africa, there are a number of countries that are still seeing low numbers of cases. Um, and there are opportunities um, in Africa, in many countries across Africa, to be able to prevent um, the uh, ability of this virus to take off. Um, again, it's a complex picture across the globe of where we are. Um, I think it is very clear that we have a long way to go. Um, the early seroepidemiologic investigations that are being conducted are indicating to us that a large proportion of the population remains susceptible, which means that the virus has the opportunity to infect more people. So it's important that we remain, that all countries remain vigilant and keep in place their workforce to detect the virus, to detect people who have the virus and care for them appropriately, um, to isolate them, to find and trace all contacts and quarantine those contacts, to ensure that the public is fully informed of the situation in each country and at the lowest administrative level, um, because it's important that the public go with us in this and really understand that we have a long way to go. Um, and so we, we, do, we do see encouraging trends, and I think we need, to, we need to celebrate those successes, but we need to remain humble and we need to remain vigilant um, because this virus uh, likes to uh, find the cracks and it will exploit those cracks and find every opportunity to take off if it can. So we must do everything that we can to prevent that from happening. Can I just uh, just supplement something? Maria's given an excellent overview. I just want to highlight uh, one particular situation that we become increasingly concerned with, and that is the the, the rising number of cases in, in countries affected by fragility, conflict, and with high numbers of vulnerable populations, uh, refugees or displaced populations. Over the last week, a number of weeks, we've seen worrying increases of disease in Haiti, in Somalia, in Sudan, in South Sudan, in Yemen, in Syria, in Afghanistan, uh, in Sierra Leone, in the Central African Republic, and uh, most recently investigating a, a serious cluster of uh, respiratory disease in adults in Kano in, in northern Nigeria. Uh, we are remain deeply concerned 
about the impact that this disease will have in communities who are already greatly underserved, have many underlying conditions, uh, and uh, um, it's, a, it's, it's a real concern for the humanitarian community. Uh, and I know Mark Lowcock, uh, um, the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and the Director General, uh, launched a humanitarian appeal a number of weeks ago now. But uh, there's still a lot of work to do in countries. We need to get uh, sustainable access to all populations in all countries, um, and we need to be able to deliver essential health services as well as COVID response. Um, and uh, I think uh, it's, 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 it's truly important that, uh, that, that this happens because these populations have already suffered too much. Uh, and the extra impact of COVID-19 uh, at this point can be avoided if we rush to provide the extra support that's needed um, uh, for these people who live on all sides of conflict. And as the Secretary General has called for on a number of occasions, we need a de-escalation of conflict in these situations in order for a proper uh, COVID-19 response to be mounted. No one on this planet will be safe until everyone is safe, and we cannot let this disease spread unchecked in these communities. Uh, it is, it is neither the right thing to do, nor is it the smart thing to do.